Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Cameron hails EU block on mobile roaming fees Farmers told don't count on EU cash Demonstrators protest in Portugal crisis cuts And Europe at the crossroads, mightiness or death Plus, quit the EU, some voters don't know Britain is already a mender, warns Watchdog I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. An attempt by the European Union to scrap mobile telephone roaming charges has been welcomed by David Cameron. The Prime Minister said it was an example of Brussels making people's lives easier rather than more difficult. Consumers next year will be able to use their mobile phones throughout the EU for the same price as at home after officials move to fast-track major reforms of telecoms regulation. Right, DC. <laughs> Where have you been? This is legislation that Neely Crows has been driving and we have been reporting on this for over six months. Now you're trying to use this to say that the EU is trying to make folks' lives easier. You're off your bananas, you lying little kleptocrat. Do you think an EU regulatory lavatory flush is making people's lives easier? Do you think changing supplement testing directives, forcing small businesses in the UK to go bust, makes lives easier? Ireland's agriculture sector could be entering a golden era, but young farmers have been told to look beyond the check in the post from Brussels. At the annual conference of Macra na Ferme, UCD economist Alan Renwick said the outlook for farming was bright. He said Irish agribusinesses were poised to take advantage of growing demand for Western style food in Asia and Africa. However, Ireland's East MEP Mary McGuinness told a macro conference in Carlo that she was tired of the overemphasis on how much farmers received in EU direct payments. Well, this is good. The EU subsidised the production of food, but where do you think these subsidies come from? Well, your taxes. So think about it for one second. The EU is increasing your taxes to reduce the price of your food by subsidising the farmers. Well, what's wrong with that model? Well, how about allowing the farmers to increase prices, but reducing folks' taxes so they have more money to spend on the foods the farmers produce? Keynesian economic theory calls that a free market, and the EU apparently believes in that model, and yet it ignores its own advice. Talk about hypocritical. Thousands of people have protested in Portugal against salary cuts and public sector reforms imposed by the government under the country's international bailout deal. Crowds rallied in the old centre and the capital of Lisbon and marched towards Parliament. And while rallies were also staged in the northern city of Porto and 12 other towns in demonstrations called by a citizens collective known as Get Lost Troika. <laughs> This whole banking rip-off fraud is an outrageous affront to the free market theory too. In a free market, the banks would have been allowed to fail. Now, sure, the political flashback would have probably brought down the governments, but the people would by now be on the up, just like Iceland. The founding fathers of the European Union believed that the integration and mutual cooperation of countries of the old continent would bring lasting peace and contribute to the harmonious economic growth and development of economic power. Today, however, it is often said that the integration process has halted at a critical point and dreams of a European power will not come true in the near future, if ever. Meagre economic growth, a prolonged crisis in the Eurozone, and severing the roots of our civilization not only hinder the development of a united Europe, but also introduce numerous new differences and divisions. Now, this article goes on to take a look at where we are today, and what changes need to be undertaken, and the social, economic and political difficulties that are ahead.
The planned referendum on the UK's membership of the European Union should be changed because some voters are unaware Britain is already a member, the elections watchdog has said. MPs are currently considering proposals to go to voters in 2017 asking, do you think that the United Kingdom should be a member of the European Union? But the Electoral Commission said a more neutral alternative would be should the United Kingdom remain a member of the European Union or leave the European Union. Now, any change in the wording is likely to delay the passage of Tory MP James Wharton's private members bill, which is already likely to have a rocky ride through Parliament. He warned earlier this year that any amendment would make the progress of the bill more difficult because opponents would be able to seize on parliamentary techniques to help bring it to a halt. Well, I think the government needs to think long and hard about evading true democratic process. If this bill is subverted and the people do not get a vote on this issue, then that clearly demonstrates that Britain is not a democracy. It is in fact some kind of oddball dictatorship. Today in our video library, because it's such a good reminder of how democratic process can be subverted and indeed how politicians can mislead the general public into the idea that one thing is happening when really it is another, I want to highlight again our short documentary film, Betrayed. In this documentary, you can see the parallels between the closed-door meetings held by Edward Heath and Macmillan and how they told barefaced lies about what the intention of the common market was. Be warned, folks. Take a look at David Cameron's posturing. Listen carefully to the rhetoric and ask yourselves, are we not being led up the same garden path as before? I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>